and so on. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Hakodash. Though we honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and preach the truth and truth sincerity. So on to the hope of lick and get straight into it. All right. This is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So at this, this present moment, just like every other moment, now is the time to seek Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, before the destruction comes. And this is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians that make up the 12 tribes of Israel. This isn't for everyone. This is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians that, that make up the 12 tribes of Israel. So it's to call upon him while he is near. And how is he near? Through his servants, in which he has on the highways and the byways, teaching the 100% truth. Who we like to say is the, the great men of GMS, the, the elders, the apostles, the elders, uh, and those on down that teach the likewise doctrine. Well, like I said, the key point is while he is near. So this is implying that's, uh, that there's going to come a time or the Lord is not going to be near. And you know, with that, man, hey, the scripture speak upon a famine of the word, man. I mean, a lack of the word, you have about outside. There's going to come a point in time where the Lord is going to draw back the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I remove this process from the street, man. Then you won't have any access to the word you have about seeing outside. Whoever got it, read This is Habakkuk 2 and 3. For the vision is yet for a point in time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. It will not tarry. So just to back brother up, you know, us coming off the streets, you know, people are actually, you know, the, the elect are being sealed. You know, they are coming back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But this is for those who, this is for those of you that have come across this, this, the brother's teaching, that have been uh, scoffing, you know, it's, it's time, as time is drawing near, the prophecies um, that are coming to pass, you know, like brother mentioned, um, you know, at one point in time, the brothers will be pulled off the streets. You know, that's one of the prophecies. We got the MOTV, you know, that that's, uh, that's vastly, that's quickly approaching. Um, we got Jacob's trouble, you know, where it's going to be insurrections and sedition among men, chaos all throughout the streets. Hey, real quick, somebody grab Jeremiah 37. Dealing with Jacob's trouble. Because I was looking at a, uh, I was looking at a screenshot earlier today. We spoke about uh, those who didn't get jabbed about how they was going to track them. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, 7. Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it. So that none is like it. So in all comparable history, nothing will be comparable to Jacob's trouble. That's right. Jacob being the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, meaning what? This is your enemy's last attack, great at uh, assault against you. Go ahead. Right, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Right, so Jacob's trouble. Somebody look up that word troubles. Never looked it up before. Alright, because I, I was reading this article and they said that hospitals are tracking those who haven't gotten inoculated. Alright? Or inserted with medicine. Read between the lines as if you will. Alright? You got that word trouble? Go ahead. Sometimes it wrong in Hebrew. It says straight, straight, right. So it's straight. So when you look at Egypt, right? Egypt, Matrazarium means straights, a double straight. So what happened when we was in Egypt? They was coming up with various different ways to make it harder for us, more difficult for us, right? Let them make brick without straw. Let them go to get it themselves. So now what you see in modern time is they're tracking those, this is just one angle of it, they're tracking those who haven't gotten inserted with the medicine. All right, to, to, to do what? To, to add trouble unto you in some type of way, shape, or form. Go ahead, Ivan. It says uh, distress, trouble. Distress, all right? Or oh, another word for that is harassment. 
all right? Taxation. Who knows? It might be a tax pretty soon coming on those who ain't inserted or something. It's not a far-fetched uh, idea. We got more on that. Yeah, just a uh, back book real quick. Um, when we go to that, when we go to the scripture, second Ezra chapter 8, verse 50, when it talks about great miseries, all right, when we look up that word miseries, one of the words is distress. Right. All right, so ultimately, hey, like the brothers are going into, man, it's going to come a time where, you know, the earth is going to be put in a position of unease, man, or straits, a position of difficulty, man. Yeah. Right, the target being Jacob, because remember, it's Jacob's struggle. Like the brothers going into, he saw his last attempt. Like, uh, to uh, wipe us out, man. Right, because uh, the rest of you, the rest of you, you get caught up in it. Because first of all, Esau oppresses the whole world. But... The rest of you people are collateral damage. Jacob is the target. And, the, and, and for those of you, you, you know, you, you other white people or you other people of other races who get caught up in that, then you just get caught up in it as far as they're concerned. But whatever they got to do to oppress and hold Jacob down, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, that's the goal. That's the objective. And everybody else that get caught up in that, even if you're a so-called white person, you just collateral damage. Because this is the this is the mission of the devil. You know? That's it. Yeah. It just, it also to back you up, like in in ancient times, Egypt, what was the what was the phrase that kept that Yahweh Bashim Shai kept sending forth through Moses? Let my people go. So just like even today's time, you know, it's about his people. So the Lord can change if not. Right? So that's that's the whole point of the, the scriptures for the, the elect, well, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians that make up the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the one who Yahweh by Shimon Shai that said he is love. This is the, uh, Jacob have I love and Esau have I hated. You know, so he's had a a, a, a a love and a bondage for the children of Israel, which are his people, and so he's coming back to gather his people, those who have repented. Those who are uh, those who are truly merciful, you know, and hope for his return. We had a precept earlier, right? Read, read that. Ecclesiastes and Torah, five and seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the to the Lord and put not put not off from day to day. And so it's not a time to procrastinate. Like, oh, okay, I see him now. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll double back later. Oh, I'll come back next, next Friday. You know, you, you, you sit there and you, and it pop, you, you, you're scrolling through internet and you, you come across the men of the Lord and teach you the scriptures and you, you just skim on through it and say, I, I still got time. You know, it says put not off from day to day. Right. So, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and then thy security. Oh, wait, wait. Read that over. For suddenly, Slow down a little bit. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. All right, what did, uh, grab that team from the night street. It says, for suddenly, meaning what? Keep reading, brother. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And then thy security. And then thy security. You gonna did everything to make your situation the best possible. Which ain't nothing wrong with that. But what happens is when that's your first and foremost positioning, then that's when you get caught unawares by the spiritual dealings of Yahweh by Shimi Got a couple of definitions. We'll read that scripture first. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse. I'm gonna just start at one. It said, "But of the, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. When they shall sell peace and safety, all the economy go balance itself out. All this, all the next president gonna make more jobs." There's going to be, oh, the, the housing market is going to stabilize itself. When they come with all of these projections of economic stability, go ahead. 
It says, Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And they use, the, the, the Bible used the illustration of a woman giving birth. Because she don't know when her water going to burst. Women water burst, for the most part, through unexpected times. She woke out of, us, out of her sleep, went to the bathroom, her water broke. She was at work copying, you know, uh, documents, her water broke. What's so, that's, a, that's at an unexpected time, right? So that's what they're saying. So when they say peace and safety, so when Esau, the white, the so-called white man, the devil, come with a, with a solution to the problem, Oh no, this is this is this is what's gonna level everything out. Suddenly, uh what did it say? It says, then sudden destruction come up upon them. Then sudden destruction come up upon them. You got more on that? To rock five? Yeah. Go ahead. It says And then thy security, thou shalt be destroyed. And perish in the day of vengeance. And perish in the day of vengeance, because the day of the Lord is the day of vengeance. Amos what? It says what? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. What is it to you, those that desire the day of the Lord? That's what the day of the Lord is. The day of the Lord is that's that's his turn to execute. That's his turn to reward all the actions in the earth. Whether they be good or bad, whether they be righteous or wicked. So vengeance plays a part in it. Right, and just also, you know, scripture say there is no peace, said the Lord to the wicked. And then, of course, another thing that he mentioned is like Esau is always coming. You know, he has a whole other agenda, but he brings forth something totally different. Yeah, we're we're working on, you know, um, livening up the economy. You know, like he said, the housing and all of that. But then the scriptures also tells us about him. You know, he says, never trust thy enemy. I got that. All right, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 10. It says, never trust thy enemy, for like his iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So the enemy eventually will show himself. You know, just like iron eventually when the oxygen, 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 you know, it hits the iron. And over time, it, it, show, it starts to rust. So is the wickedness of Esau either. Go ahead. Verse 11 says, Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped the looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. So the main point is, is that eventually, you know, he, he shows himself to be friendly, but in the end, he has, he has um, a, another arterial motive to take so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians down. Okay. He read it. He got it. Come. Back to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 7. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way and our righteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Yep. So, so again, the wicked in this in the scripture is talking about Israel. Okay. And those are the only ones that he will have mercy upon. Is, is the children of Israel, and and forsaking your thoughts. So uh, somebody grab Isaiah fourteen and uh, one. And, and forsaking and forsaking your thoughts, right? Trying to do things your own way. What scripture tells us that trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to thy own understanding, and in all thy ways acknowledge Him. And he shall direct our path. So when we're talking about, when, you know, repenting and coming back, forsaking your your ways, the ways that you have had thought to be right in this world, what Esau has taught you, what the other nations has taught you, all the philosophies and doctrines um, that have, have are all vanity that haven't brought you any real any real fruit. You know, hasn't brought you anything. You know, we're talking about coming back to the ways that how Hashem was shot. You know. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, read that for the book. Verse 1 is coming. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord, and how about Shimei outside, will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel. Like the brother said, that's who the, that's who the Lord's mercy on Jacob is too. 
So when he says, uh, the verse the brother read, um, you read a verse. Read that verse again, you read the last verse. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7. Says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. That means, that's the point. They said, return. You can only return to where you've already been. So that's talking about the Israelites. It's not talking about you heathen nations. Read, brother. Uh, Isaiah 14 and 1 again. Uh, it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And, and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right, right. Yeah. And, those, and those strangers, again, yeah, is dealing with. Uh, the, the Israelite foreigners that has been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, right? Because in the end, with the with the great, uh, what's going to be so great is that Yahweh Bashimi Al Shai is going to raise up. You know, uh, he's not going to be known for the uh, what he did in, in the Egypt, the ancient Egypt, but he's going to be known for bringing the. Can somebody grab that. Jeremiah 16. Yeah, Jeremiah 16. Start around. Start around verse, uh, start around verse 14. If I may remember, the a key point in that scripture in uh, Isaiah 14 it says the Lord the Lord will set us on our own land, meaning Yahweh Bashin Asai will do it himself. Yeah. So that's the cut. I see the many hatters, man, over in our lands, man. They're imposters, man. Right, they're not the children of Yahweh Bashin Asai. The many hatters. <laughs> you gotta be careful because you don't know what they intend to do. The many hatters, right. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the Paquito hats. <laughs> 1948 is. Mm -hmm. You got it? Yeah. Jeremiah right. yeah. right. yeah. 16 and 14. Behold, the days, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that it shall come no more. He, he said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So we, we know about the first everybody knows about the first Egypt. They've heard stories, they've seen movies, they've read, you know, of course, the book, the scriptures, right? Everybody knows about the first, the first Egypt and how Yahweh, 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 with the mighty hand, uh, gathered the children of Israel, uh, out of that place, okay? Right? But the Lord lived so out of the land of north, which we're talking about here in the Americas. Go ahead. And from all the lands where they he had driven them in, I will bring them again into their land. And from all the lands. Because not because the, the, the bulk of the Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and uh, Native Americans, are in the land of the north, which is uh, North America. And, and, and even within North America, the, the, the highest concentration is in Babylon. Because what, 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 what happens with the Argentinians, the Brazilians, the Mexicans, the Haitians, the Colombians? What do they do? They fighting to get here. They fighting to get to Babylon. So Babylon is the premier uh, land mass of the North, right? North America. It's, it's, ba it's America. It's Babylon. That's right. It's the United States of America. Okay? So, the analogy is that the deliverance from here is going to dwarf or trump the deliverance from Egypt. That's why they, that's, that's, that's the, the, the analogy that the Lord is using. Because that was a great deliverance from Egypt. You know, the, 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 the ten plagues, all right? Uh, the Lord uh, uh, sinking Pharaoh's army, okay? The Lord leaving him in the wilderness 40, 40. Look, that was mighty. They got a movie, the, the, the Ten Commandments, which is a, you know, Esau, which is so-called white people portraying the actors of the biblical characters when we know the biblical characters were not white in fact they were so-called negro latino native americans origin we know that
and there was a chair and, and and there was a chariot what you what you people refer to as UFOs like the brothers looking up at the chariot right now what you people refer to as UFOs it was a chariot okay that led them in the, in the wilderness it says a cloud by day and a fire by night you look up the word cloud it's, it means theophanic cloud and the, and the prefix theo means godlike. So when, when so when God says cloud, or when the Bible says cloud in reference to the Almighty or the, or the, or the, the only power, what does He mean? Go ahead, brother. So the Book of Psalms, chapter one hundred four and verse three it says, "Who layeth the beams of His chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds His chariot? His vehicle? Who maketh the cloud His vehicle? A chariot?" First and foremost is a vehicle to shuttle forth passengers and to pick up passengers. So the Lord made his heavenly vehicles clouds, aka chariots, CKA UFOs, currently known as. That's what CKA means. Currently known as UFOs. You got it Because Esau, man, he put all these labels. Like, like the brother's talking about, man, UFO, UAP. He, you know, Esau, he them so-called white man. He comes up with all these labels just to hide the truth. But you can't hide it, man. You can't hide it. So even, um, I think it was an article from NASA. They even said it themselves, man. They released some some videos of the so-called UFOs, but they have plenty more that, uh, that they won't show to the public, man. Hey, because, bro, the chariots are here, man. The chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yashai are here, man. And the book of Zechariah chapter 5 tells you that. The, uh, this is the curse that goes forth over grab the whole that. face Somebody of the earth. Somebody grab that. Starting to talk to you about the shot. So that's what they're going in. Y'all started, brother started out with, uh, uh, turn to the Lord while he is near. Because what's coming up represents that, look, he coming, he coming with vengeance now. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying robe. Just behold, a flying robe. Now, Zechariah, uh, what he's receiving a vision of is uh, what the world calls UFOs, man, the chariots of Israel. All right? That's what the flying robe is like in unto, man. A chariot. That's what the chariot is like in unto, a flying robe. Go ahead. It says, And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying robe. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. So, you know, going into the size of the chariot, how big the chariot is, man. It's, hey, even the book of uh, Second Edges, man, it described Yahweh shot on the top of a mountain. Right, the mountain being representative of the chariot that he's coming back on, man. All right, so, hey, go ahead, bro. Verse 3, it says, Then he said unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. It says, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Now it's labeled as a curse, right, because ultimately, when Yahweh Bashim Yashai comes back with the chariots, or right, in the angels, man, what majority of the people that are, are on the soil of America, right, if you're if you're not of the elect and you're on the soil of America, man, then this is a curse unto you, because it's bringing your destruction, or your death. It's the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter three, verse uh, uh, thirty-three. It says, "The curse of the Lord." Is in the house of the wicked, but he blessed the habitation of the just. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Now the main wicked, you know, you saw even the so-called white man to be the wicked, or you got wicked among our people, or right, wicked of the heathen nations. So, hey, when the Lord comes back with those chariots, man, are all those who are not of the elect man, it's going to get set, man. All right, what do you say about the habitation of the just? He says, uh, says, but he blessed the habitation of the just. But he blesses the habitation of the just, and on this side, the just is the elect. The two thirds are, are just uh, just so deep in the wicked. All right? But what? Now Washington Hashad, now Washington Hashad is gonna bless his elect with what? Salvation, immortality, the kingdom, all right? Whereas if you're not the elect, hey, then death and destruction is coming unto you. Yeah, the scripture says he will beautify the meek with salvation. You got to bring it out, This is back in Zechariah chapter 5, verse 3. 
It says, Then he said unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that swears shall be cut off as on this, that side according to it. Okay, the Lord, Yahweh by Shia side, is coming back to cut off all evil doers, man. All sinners, man. All, all, all within his man are going to die in that day, man. Right, whether you buy a chariot that Yahweh by Shia side, or whether you got a missile with your name right now, man. All right? Now, even though it's a curse to the majority of, of the people on the face of the earth, man, it's a blessing unto the elect. All right? Because that's the vehicle of their salvation, man. Alright. Hey, uh, somebody grab Habakkuk 3. Let's see the first couple of verses. Back up with, just real quick, back up what the brother just said. Oh, yeah, I know he is talking. But after, 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 bring out what he's talking about. Read that, uh, Habakkuk uh, 3, 3, and, uh, go ahead, brother. 3 and, uh, 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, upon. Shigayanah. Oh Lord, O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid, O oh, oh Lord. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid, meaning what? I've heard the breakdown of the prophecy. Ezekiel, the third chapter says, written within and without was mourning, lamentation, and woe. So I heard that, O oh Lord. Go ahead. Feel thy work in the midst. Uh, Revive thy work. And that word revive me. Y'all play Call of Duty. What do revive me? To bring back to life. Which basically what? Basically, basically meaning what? Lord, let your word, let your prophecies manifest within the earth. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. Make thy, uh, go ahead. Now. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, may no known in wrath remember mercy. Right, it says, make make thy works known. Make uh, miss in the midst of the years, make known, may known in wrath remember mercy. In, in wrath remember mercy, because those chariots are coming to execute and to deal wrath. Right. But at the same time, those chariots are coming for salvation. So those chariots serve a dual purpose to execute the wrath of the Most High and the mercy of the Most High by delivering the whole free elect. Who got that word? Uh, read the scripture again. Then go into the word. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 5, uh, verse 3. It says, Then he said unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and everyone that swears shall be cut off as on that side according to it. So basically, this is the method that the Most High is using to execute judgment. Some people use a guillotine. Some people use an electric chair. The Most High is using his chariots. He using famine. He using the sword. He using beasts to tear. Somebody get your Jeremiah 15. He used it. Uh, get the most high's on. Read what you got. Oh no, no, you got that, you got that word, brother? Allah. Ah, la, ha. No, ah, la. What is that word again? Did the brother look up curse? No, uh, exactly right. This is the curse. Right here in the strong. There. So it says Allah. It says, and it goes into oath, oath of covenant, curse from God, from men. Oath, execration, swearing. So the Lord is saying, look, 
he confirming that this album will do. You know how you get a you get something notarized from the notary public? You might be married to a woman or you might have a deal or an agreement. The Lord saying, this is my, I got this notarized. Or this a promissory note. Like it's, it's, it's the creed. Read what you got out there. Isaiah 66 uh, Isaiah 66 and 15 For behold the Lord will come with fire and the chariots like a warlock and to render his anger and fury and in his rebuke and flames of fire That's just for behold then yeah, look the Lord will come with uh, chariots like a whirlwind a whirlwind being representative of destruction alright hey when the Lord comes back with the chariots man it ain't gonna be nothing sweet man. it ain't gonna be nothing pretty all right, like the brother uh, stated earlier, man, those, those chariots are serving a dual purpose, man. Our right, salvation and destruction, but we know there's going to be more destroyed right, than be saved. All right, it's in his rebuke of flames of fire. That's the ultimate point. We know fire, right, we know that the chariots are going to uh, uh, produce those concentrated fire laser beams, man. Start zapping people. All right, if you want a good representation of that, man, I right, watched the opening scene to War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise, man. Uh, when, the, uh, uh, when the things invaded uh, 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 the city, man, uh, as soon as they zapped the people, man, they turned to dust, man. That's also like the scripture say, man, hey, a lot of people that day, they're they going to be beaten to powder. Beaten to powder. Go ahead, bro. Isaiah 66 and 15. Isaiah 66 and 15. By fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Said before, by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Now we go into that word plea, and in Hebrew is shapat, meaning judge. So don't go and read, uh, or punish. Uh, yep, punish. Yeah. So don't think plead in that scripture mean you know the Lord is coming to bargain, make an agreement. No, none of that. Man. All right, the scripture say wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the earth. Therefore, the Lord will no longer hold his tongue, meaning judgment are going to start going out, man. Right. All right. Somebody grab Genesis wow. six, where the scripture says the Lord will not always strive with men. That's right. Nah, 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 nah. That'll be the proper context. Please. Go ahead. Grab, grab Genesis 6. I don't know. 8, 9, 10. It should say strive, though. The Lord will not always. Can somebody grab Proverbs 1 and 20. Hey, because we know at the end of the day, man, that ultimate judgment, I thought y'all were watching that side three, that, that, that huge final judgment that the Lord is bringing. It's going to come by way of fire, man. All right, the second death, man, which is going to come by way of fire and brimstone. All right, the first death came by way of the flood. All right. But we know this, uh, uh, this, the second death, is going to come by way of fire and brimstone. You know, it, it, it's spiritual, man, because, like, what? Water and fire are two uh, cleansing agents, man. And, and they're two the death agents. That's right. All right. And what is it? How about seeing that shot coming to do, man? Cleanse the earth of his wickedness, man. Y'all got it. 63, five, uh, all right, this is Genesis 6, chapter 6, verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. So the Lord not going to go back and forth with you continuously. Somebody grab Proverbs 1 and 20. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20, just keep reading. It says, Wisdom cried without she uttered her voice in the streets. She cried in the chief place of concourse in the openings of the gates. Yep, hey, what's that going into, man? Uh, first and foremost, how is wisdom crying, man? All right, the Lord has rested his spirit upon his men. I right, to go out there and teach his word, man. I right, teach his wisdom to the people. I right, say in the chief place of concourse, meaning we out in the open with it, man. Are right, we not concealing the truth, man? Are right, we not uh, uh, somewhere concealed, man? We out here in the open, man. Where the mass of the people are, man. Yeah, chief place of concourse, meaning the main place of traffic, where you're going to come across the most people. Right. In the openings of the gates, the city, she uttered her words, saying, How long, you simple ones, do you love simplicity? It says, How long, you simple ones, do you love simplicity? Ultimately, at, at the end of the day, man, at first and foremost, somebody get that word uh, simplicity. But what this message is, t uh, is towards you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. All right, how long will you simple ones love simplicity, man? How long are you two-thirds going to be uh, uh, indulged in wickedness, man? 
Like, how long are you two thirds gonna be involved with the stupid trends of this world, man? Like, how much longer are you gonna reject the word of Yahweh about seeing our son? Simplicity. It's uh, folly. Folly. Silliness. Do not the scripture say folly is set in great dignity, man? And what does folly mean? Foolishness. Alright? Hey, a lot of the things people are doing out here in today's day and age is stupid, man. Alright? It's like people people lack critical thinking. They don't make wise decisions, man. Alright? They just going off the flesh. And then they and they put it all out in, in the social media. You know, they just put it all out. All manners of uh, evil with it. You know, they have it out for all these um, and then and then they flaunt it, but it's like a way of flaunting it against the job I sent out a child, like it's crab royals knowing that you know the Lord says uh, these fools are an abomination. You know, they have all types of um, uh, lewd uh, acts, men with men with men, women with women. And they love to bask in that wickedness and put it all out there. You know, we're basking in the ambiance. White cheese. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it says, and the scorners delight in their scorning. And the scorners delight in their scorning. Because, hey, you know, two thirds of our people, man, they take, they take a, a, a pleasure. All right, and scorning the wordy, how about you not shot? Mocking the wordy, how about you not shot? But you know what? It's going to come a point in day, uh, it's going to come a point in time, all right? Where the Lord is going to make you eat your words, man. All right? We're going to do all kinds of hell, all kinds of affliction. Then you're going to want to hear the word of Yahweh about you not shot, but the Lord not hearing you, man. That's why the, the, the chances now, man, the doors of mercy are still open, all right, as his prophets are still out there on the highways and byways. That's why the scriptures say time and chance happens uh, to us all, man. All right, so like the brother brought out earlier in Sirach 5, make no chance to, uh, to turn to the Lord. Because the first time you're presented with this word, man, could be your very first and your very last, man. Right, so you got to grab this while you still can. It says, and fools hate knowledge. And fools hate knowledge. All right, like the scripture say, uh, Jeremiah 4, 22, for my people are fools, man. All right, so what? Two-thirds of Israelites, man, are fools because they hate knowledge, man. They don't want nothing to do with the scriptures, man. All right, they don't want anything to do with righteousness. Are right, they too, uh, uh, they too uh, uh, deep into their own wickedness, man? Turn you at my reproof. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. How is the Lord doing that, man? Through the preaching of his word, man. Because the Lord has sent forth men all right, to teach the house of Israel, man. All right, beginning with uh, our elders and apostles, the great millstone. A great millstone, elder apostles and bishops, the great millstone. And the brothers up under them, all right, and uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, brothers who are not of GMS, but they preach the same doctrine, Appreciate all right? Those are the men and the teachers that the Lord has set up, all right, to teach the house of Israel. And that's how the Lord is striving with you. You read, what is that? Genesis uh, 6 and 3 says, For my spirit shall not always strive with men, for he is but flesh. So right now, the... Uh, and the word strive means continue. Alright? Going back and forth. That's why the scripture says we are contenders of the gospel. When you continue something, you defend it, you debate it, you fight for it. So the, the, the people that's fighting on the Lord's behalf, this is me. So the Lord's hand is, is pleading with you. It's striving with you. But the Lord said, What? Well, my spirit shall not always strive with you. And, and how does that manifest in today's time? Famine of the word, uh, Jeremiah 15 and 16, such as us for death to death, to destruction to destruction, to the sword to the sword. So there's gonna come a point where you're not gonna have access to your questions being answered. Second Ezra speaks about a man shall say to, a, to another man, has righteousness gone, in, gone into thee? That will make it the man righteous. Somebody grab that real quick. It should be six, second number six or second number five. And somebody grab uh, the Amos eight and eleven too. Read the Amos if you already there. It's probably too shy. It's the book of Amos chapter eight verse eleven. It says, "Behold, the days come," said the Lord Yahweh, "that I will send a famine in the land." Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of, of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh And the main, 
the main catalyst for hearing the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is YouTube. But what? You got the apostles and the elders and the men telling you that, look, we're going to be on alternative channels. So that's the prelude. All right? You got these, these, these various different laws passed on YouTube. You, you do a video, they say, is this made for children or not? But here it is, you got little Nas X talking about whatever the hell he talking about in his videos is accessible to children. So that means what? The agenda is against the word of the Lord. <coughs> but although the agenda is against the word of the Lord, it still manifests the prophecies that the Lord foretold. His spirit shall not always strive. There shall come a famine of hearing his word. This is how the famine is going to be brought about. We got to remember, Esau is the last ruler of, of, of wickedness. Right. And the Lord works in the kingdom of men. So this is how he's using Esau, Edom, to manifest his word. He said it's going to be a famine of the... We got more than famine of the word. Yeah, it's uh, back in Amos chapter 8, verse 12. It said, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai, and shall not find it. Now grab this second answer. It said, they shall wander from sea to sea, from, from people to people. The seas represent people when you when you read the word. They're going to go from different people and different people and different people to seek, but they shall not find it. Go ahead. This is uh, 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 11. It says, One land also shall ask another and say, It's righteousness that maketh the man righteous gone. No, 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 no. No, that's, that's the right scripture. Uh, what does verse 8 say? Uh, what is, then shall we hide herself? What's that? Is it hide herself? Then shall wit hide herself. It should be the same chapter. Maybe a few verses before. If somebody grab Proverbs when it says the, the righteous receive the evil and hide it himself. I think it's 5 and 9. Mm -hmm. It's in the 2nd, it's 5 and 9. Did yeah, somebody grab that proverb, the righteous receive the evil and hide it himself? No, I got that. Okay, read the Ezra first. This is the uh, second Ezra chapter 5 verse 9. It says, and salt water shall be found in the sweet. Salt water shall be found in the sweet. First of all, what we teach in this truth is sweet water. Yahweh Shah said, sweet water mean what? Drinkable. Refreshing. Yahweh Shah said what? Uh, uh, he that believeth on me, as, a, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. When the, when the, when the woman came to Yahweh Shah at the well, he said, the water that I got to give, you shall thirst no more. So the sweet waters is this truth. And the salt waters is the, the false doctrines that brothers with demons getting on them, falling out, and adding to the mix. It's already pre-mixed. It's already, you know how you buy the Kool-Aid and it already got the perfect amount of sugar yep. and flavor? You ain't got to add nothing else to it. Right. But brothers added, and, and that's twofold because that's happening. We're brothers adding salt waters, meaning false doctrine to the truth, because the truth is sweet water, but also in this world. Like Isaiah says, what? Uh, 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 the earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Yep. So from the practices committed in this earth under Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, you actually literally have salt waters mixing in with fresh water. You got certain uh, animals that's, 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 that should only be in salt oceans coming into fresh oceans. This was about two or three years ago. Read. Uh, says, um, and all friends shall destroy one another. Then shall wit All friends itself. shall destroy one another. All right? That's all you see in the going on in, in, in the media and the news is a, a, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of betrayal. Hell, the young thug and gunner thing. Yep. I, whatever, whatever. But that's just, that's just one that's just one thing. That, that's happening every day on the lower level. Betrayal of, uh, of uh, friends and family, that's becoming more normalized now. It used to be you commit something like that, you got to move out of state. 
can't pop up. The only time you come back to the neighborhood is if, is if it's the death of the family. And not no regular death. It got to be like a, a grandma or uncle. You know what I'm saying? Not You know? All friends shall be, uh, what is that? You say destroy and betray. A, and all friends shall destroy one another. Yes, yeah, shall destroy one another. Go ahead. It says, then shall wit hide itself and understanding withdraw itself into his secret chamber. Now, what's wit? All right. Who has the wit? The believers. The prophets. Another word for wit is knowledge, information, wisdom. Like when people say, oh, yeah, you're witty. That's, a, that's wisdom. Wit shall hide itself because this, this world is not going to be conducive for the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So what? We're going to have to, the hopeful elect going to have to what? Going to have to play a certain role. You're going to have to navigate. Read uh, the Proverbs. This is Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and fighteth himself. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. What is foreseeing? That means you see it before it happened. So you you reading the prophecies of the Lord. You seeing how the prophecies line up with the current legislation, with the current direction of the earth, with the current direction of America and the policies. And you know what you do? You adjust. So you not you don't go to work talking about don't eat pork. That's wit hiding itself. On one level, man. You ain't broadcast, you're not broadcasting the superior knowledge that we have. Because it's not conducive. Read more on that. It says, but the simple pass on and are punished. But the simple pass oh, 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 la -di -la -la -la. Boing! Knocked upside your damn head, man. It says the, the, it says the, the, the what it say? The prudent foresee, the prudent foresee the evil. So that was what that means. You see a fucking uh, train up a couple blocks, and you see it's going slow. You you adjust. You adjust to that situation, man. What was you at before that? So we, we have more in Amos. No, it's more than us. Second Ezra. It's more than that. The second Ezra chapter 5 verse 10 says, and shall be sought of many and yet not be found. Right, and, the, and that, that wit and that wisdom shall be sought of many and shall not be found. Because it's going to come a point in time where them niggas and dresses, quote unquote, the things that they said that you called it, that, that you called it earful of, it's going to play back to you. And you're gonna be looking for them. Because what's that? Because the the, the 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 hopeful elect, the men of the Lord, we saying the unexpected. See, you people not expecting this. That's why the the script the, the Yahweh said, I come back as a thief as in the night. What did that mean? Unexpected. Where, where, where he knew if not, you weren't expecting it. That's why I said uh, the prudent foreseeth the evil. You're expecting it. We're expecting all of these things. That's right, bro. You got it. Preparing, embracing yourself. Like you said, you're putting yourself in, in positions based off of the ways of the Habashim al Shah. Right. Finishing on verse 2. It says, Then shall unrighteousness and un and incontinency be multiplied right. upon and earth. In, and incontinency be without restraint. Like you got people uh, who have, uh, you know, older people, sometimes they be referred to as incontinent, meaning what? They have no control over their bowels. All right? So they just, they got to wear the pants and they got to wear adult diapers because their bowels are without restraint. Ain't no clinching they can do to stop until they get it's over with. And the and the vows in the scriptures, certain certain instances, it represents your inner your inner man, your inner being. So this world is gonna be so violent, so wicked, 
that people are going to live without restraint. It's going to be like the purge. Somebody grab Matthew 24, 12. I'm already it's the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It says because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So, you know, iniquity to be sin upon sin upon sin, right? And the word abound goes into increase. So, if uh, uh, as sin increases and wickedness multiplies in the earth, man, hey, the love of many is going to wax cold, man. There's going to be uh, all kind of um, lawlessness, man. All, all kinds of stuff going on in these last days, man. All right? Because say, uh, you got... Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, you say it's the last piece of bread. It's two people and, and one last loaf of bread, man. Hey, they're not going to consider each other, man. All right, the only thing on they, in their mind is, I got to survive. I got to eat, man. Even if I got to kill for it, man. All right? Ain't no love in that. Because they already transgressed the laws of the Most High. But then they're going to transgress the laws of the ruling people. They're gonna transgress Esau's laws. So it ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be no, it's gonna be utter lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Cause you've been, you, you, you've been transgressed the laws of the most high. Somebody grab Isaiah 8, uh, 20, 20, 21 or something. Hungry, bestead. Yeah, go ahead. All right, this is Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. Read verse 21. 21. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I said 821. And they that pass through it hardly uh, bestowed, bestead. bestead, and and hunger. hunger. So malnourished, okay? They that pass through it hardly bestead and hungry. Malnourished, without resources, through. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall uh, fret themselves. They shall fret themselves. They shall panic. Go ahead. And curse their king. And curse their king. Yes, so finally, you niggas going to curse Joe Biden. Finally. Finally. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans going to criticize Joe Biden. Or whoever the king may be. So you shall curse your king, go ahead. And their God. And their God. So you Christians, all right, who drunk off the other white meat, you're going to finally curse white Jesus. You're going to finally curse Allah. You're going to finally curse, God damn it, uh, Buddha. Uh, uh, Buddha. Or the other one. What do you say? Krishna. 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 You're going to finally curse all this other shit, right? The the, the, the energy of <laughs> uh, 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 Taurus rising. Look at him, he Taurus rising. <laughs> Taurus rising, oh, God damn it. Sagittarius is moon. All that goofy shit. Read. And look upward. And look upward. That was it? Yeah. All right, all right. You have more on that second as five? Read more on that second as five. Yeah, second Ezra's chapter five and verse eleven. It says, One land also shall ask another and say, It's righteousness that maketh the man righteous going through thee. Right, so like the book of Eli, right? He was traveling. Right? Y'all seen the book of Eli? Right. right. So the book of Eli, he traveling. So the people he come into contact with don't ask him. Hey, the, the stuff that the man on the corner was talking about, you know, you you know what that was talking about. What you know about that? You guys go say something. Nah, nah. You said the book of Eli because in that movie, uh, what uh, Gary Gary Oldman, the dude who played the dude that was coming to get Denzel, what he was trying to, the, his whole goal was to get the Bible from uh, Denzel's hands, man. I, uh, well, when he first attempt, when he uh, first got it, or when he got it from him, what? It had like a, the, the, the Bible had like a lock on it, man. Meaning the understanding was sealed. He couldn't get to it. And even when he got the lock off, it was written in, in Braille. But meaning he couldn't see it, man. So hey, that's spiritual in itself because what, what Yahweh Bashim is going to do in these last days, man, he's going to withdraw the, uh, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, withdraw his word, all right? 
and you're not going to have any access to it, man. That's why our scriptures say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. All right? So, and the, strength of, uh, the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure because with the fear of the Lord uh, 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 comes the beginning of wisdom, man. All right? It tells you in the book of Proverbs. All right? I might have a quick one real quick because he's, he, he, he brought up, uh, you know, in that movie, the book was written in Braille and Braille is a... a, a a writing system for the blind, right? So this is Isaiah 42 and 16. It says, and I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. So who is that? That's the, that's the fellow believers who are asleep to this truth. And when we are walking, what? When we are walking, what? The Lord gave us eye sound. All right, the one of the elders, you know, the elder got a pay. It's called GMS eye style. You, you know, meaning what? That you can't see. You get the ointment, the eye style. Now you can see. Now you being led by a way that you knew not because we didn't know this. We didn't know this. Uh, this path. It says, uh, "I will make darkness light before them." So in this land of darkness, America, there is a path of lightness within this. Somebody grab John 3 and 16. Also, There's a path of light in this place. When you read, uh, so, so like it, brother. When you read, uh, when you read, uh, somebody grab job, uh, John 1 and 1. I got it. Read John 1 and 1 first. On top of that, somebody get, uh, uh, Psalms 119 and 105. It's the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. Read. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Read. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. All right? When you read the, 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 the law... It says, keep these statutes and commandments for this is thy life. When you read Deut it's Deuteronomy 8 or 9, Salakia, but it's one of them chapters. It says, this is thy life. And the scripture says what? The law is a light and a lamp. All right? So Yahweh Shah came in the volume of the book, man. Read. It says, oh. And the light shineth in darkness. And the light shineth in darkness. Now, when you read the, the New Testament, when you read the New Testament in Hebrew, and that in that particular verse, shineth is uh, zarak, all right? And what zarak means in context, that means that there's, that the darkness is trying to uh, hold the light down, but the light bursts forth. It breaks the darkness. And this truth has broke Okay? The philosophies of this current world. Right. Read. And darkness comprehended it not. And you can't understand it. You got a... I got a... This is Psalms 119. Verse 105. None. Thy, thy world is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. It says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I just backing up the brother that the light is representative of this truth, man. I just lose my eyes to understand it because we, we are in a world full of darkness I, or a, a sin and iniquity, man. Or a majority of the people are, are uh, in a state of ignorance. Because the book of Isaiah chapter 60 goes in a gross darkness. I was synonymous uh, with uh, 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 ignorance. Somebody have that? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, and they said, uh, they said, read that part again. The beginning. Okay. Uh, thy, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Right. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, meaning thy word is a navigation map. Your feet is what? That's how you take your steps. So thy word is how I'm going to order my steps. There's a scripture that says, order my steps in thy word. That's the song. Uh, Isaiah 60. 
Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Huh? Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. It says, Arise, shine, for that light for thy light is come, man. I also at the end of the day, man, the Lord, you have about some that shine in this scripture, man. It's talking to his elect. Right? Because this truth is what's not to understand it, man. This light. Are in these times are only meant for uh, it's only meant for the elect of the nation of Israel because not all Israel is gonna get on this side, man. Go ahead. In the glory of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is risen upon thee. Since in the glory of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is risen upon thee, and what's that going into, man? This truth is wisdom. Because hey, the Lord has men out there professing His wisdom, are showing forth this wisdom out of understanding, man. All right. What's the other scripture I call? Uh, the scripture I call John. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. It says, For the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, meaning the majority of the world is in a state of ignorance, man. And they under these uh, false philosophies, false doctrines. All right, if you're not in this truth, man, if you're not in this wisdom, knowledge, or understanding, man, then you're in gross darkness, man. All right, but elsewhere, when you're ignorant, it means you're lacking the knowledge of something. All right, so that's why scriptures say, uh, uh, the Lord said in Hosea uh, chapter 4, verse 6, for my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, man. All right, two-thirds of the nation of Israel are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, man. Right, what, what knowledge are you talking about? The knowledge, of wisdom, and understanding of these scriptures, man. All right. Yeah, give, give me one second. Man, he's supping with us, man. Or right, he's giving us the wisdom not to understand it. He's giving us the eye cell, all right, to see what's going on in the world, man, to be able to understand and perceive scriptures, man. All right. And Lord, will we be as that elect, man? Hey, how shall I go sup with us all the way to the end, man? All right. Once again, his glory, all right, going to the wisdom not to understand it because not everybody has this, man. Hey, man, scripture says, you said, Behold, I am with you. All right, bro. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that world is the world of Israel. Keep Everybody. reading. Verse 17. For the hell sent his son unto the world to condemn the world. Read that over. For for Yahweh sent his son unto the world to condemn the world. Not to condemn the world. Sometimes what happens, we trip. Somebody grab it in their Bible. See what it's saying. What app you on? The KJV Apocrypha app? Yes, yeah, sometimes they go off. So you know, John, uh, Read John 3 and 17. John 3 and 17. John 3 17. Says, for for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Right. See, see, see how I read differently. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn him. But that the world through him might be saved. Read. He, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Now this is the point. Go ahead. Because he hath not believed in the name of of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. Read. And because that name goes into a reputation and record. So you don't believe what he stands for. That's what that's saying. You don't believe what he's what he stands for, what he embodies. Read. And this is the condemnation 
That light is coming to the world. And this is the combination. That light is coming to the world. So now you are without excuse. This is why you condemn. Because now that you can see that that option has been made available to you, you denied it. You gonna say something? Else? Somebody, uh, yeah, just uh, somebody grabbed John eight and twelve, and then John fifteen and twenty two. Read that light is coming come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. And men love darkness rather than light. Smoking weed, prostituting a girl, stealing, killing, gang bangers. Men love darkness rather than light. Read. Because their deeds were evil. Because their deeds were evil. That's why, that's why the, 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 the saying for the modern American black woman is what? Accountability is kryptonite. But the average man got that same spirit too. Being accountable for your actions is kryptonite. Do as thou wilt. That's what Esau say. And that's what you and that's what the common person agree with. You can't judge you can't judge me. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of um, the book of Proverbs, chapter five, verse twenty-three. Salakia six, verse twenty-three. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instructions are the ways of life. Reproof, reproof of instruct, correction, getting your ass cussed out. That's the way of life of an Israelite. That's our heritage. That's how we get down. That's how the that's how the Israelites get down. You getting cussed the fuck out for doing something you ain't got no business doing. And that's what was taken away from us. That's why you got all these emotional niggas killing each other for getting their shoes stepped down. Because with proofs of destruction, wasn't their way of life coming up and growing up. And it's like you said earlier, bro. Um, uh, like you're doing, uh, when it comes to the black woman, so called black woman, you got accountability is kryptonite. You got a lot of men who fall under that same vibration. And why is that? Because a lot of these men were raised by single mothers, by like single black mothers at that. So they uh, they take on that same vibration. What's the, um, uh, what's that, Second Ezra 6? It says, uh, 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 talking about the woman bringing forth uh, children, roughly oh. paraphrasing. I think that's the bring forth monsters. Yep. So, uh, Mistress woman bringing forth monsters, man. Hey, hey, hey. These two third niggas, man, they don't have no discipline, man. I uh, scripture say train up a child in the way that he should go. And where's that way? Pertaining to these scriptures, man. And for also, the majority of our people are not brought up under the wooden law of the man. And they brought up, uh, they brought up under the ways of this world. All right. Because this world, this world uh, promotes what? No discipline. Do it is now will. I do it makes you feel good. All right, and they they they, they consider things uh, as discipline. They, they, they consider discipline abuse, man. All right, going to show you how how it degenerate. All right, this current uh, 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 ages, man. And that scripture in Ezra, the scripture about mistress women shall bring forth monsters. That's also literal too, you know, because like when you when you the, the earth is out of course. So you got women menstruating and uh, earlier than normal, later than normal. It, it's it's out of course. It's, it's it's abnormal, and that's why these niggas be born with deformities, man. Monsters. What did dudes say when you saw FLTs? Get a get, get a monster. That's real shit. That's really uh, uh, an illusion. An illusion to what that scripture talking about. The second as you see. Because that's literal, man. And you got more deformed little nigglets coming out now. And a lot of them deformers be mental too. Yeah, he might not walk with a little limp and he can't bend his arm all the time. But a lot of them motherfuckers be, be mental too. Yeah. Mistress women shall bring forth monsters. Go ahead, uh, you might grab the scripture from Brother Carlfield with John. John, John, uh -huh. John. Get you. This is uh, 
This is the book of John, chapter 8, and verse 12. Then spake Yahweh Shai again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. Yahweh Shai said, He is the light of the world, man. Yahweh Shai is the light of Israel. As the uh, uh, as it was brought out earlier in John chapter three, uh, this is kind of condemnation that light is coming to the world, and that light back then was Yahweh Shai. All right, he came to the world to prove our people, I correct me. All right, in these times, what Yahweh Shai has raised his spirit are right, upon his men. All right, so ultimately Yahweh Shai is the light that's shining forth through his men. All right. This is uh, John fifteen. In 22, mm -hmm. if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. So going, back, uh, going back to what the brother was saying earlier, now that the light has been presented unto you, you have no excuse, man. Right, now I said, uh, uh, if I had not come to them, uh, they know not sin, man. I mean, if your house sign wasn't there, man, and they they just be doing whatever, man. They wouldn't know they'd be uh, going up, uh, going wrong there, man. Because the, right. the scripture says the, the law came by Moses, mm -hmm. but grace and truth mm -hmm. came by your house sign. That's right. So when your house sign came on the scene, grace and truth, he expounded upon the scriptures and, 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 and brought a expounded a greater light upon it. And so now you, so now it ain't no wiggle room. See? Yep, and it said, uh, uh, they have no cloak for their sin, meaning, hey, now that this wisdom of the earth has presented unto you, and now that Yahweh Shai has came before you, man, uh, you got no excuse for your sins, man. You got no excuse for your uh, uh, wickedness, man. All right? of that light and that light is dispersed throughout his men so he said ye talking to his men he said ye are the light of the world because Yahweh Shai he's not in the world physically no more but he's in the world spiritually through his men alright through his men dispensing out the truth alright you are the light of the world a city on the hill cannot be hid why because if you're on the hill if anything, anything that's raised up in the air can be seen by everything else that's below. That's what that's what this truth is, man. We ain't we ain't we ain't hidden. These churches, whether it be non-denominational, Baptist, missionary, whatever, they hid it because they closed off to the world. They in a building. Buildings are closed off to the world. You have to go inside that building. You don't got to go inside. Uh, whatever we get, we on, we in, we on the streets. We in the public. You can roll your window up and still hear us. Yep. You cut your music up and still hear us a little bit. You see that? Uh, back into the anybody who else home? Go ahead. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse five. It says, "Ye are are all the children of light, and the children of of the day." It says, "Ye are the children of light, and the children of the day." Now, who is the person? Are the elect of Yahweh? By some side, because only the elect is able to obtain this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Real quick, somebody else grab Romans eleven. All right. But this truth, man, is wisdom, not understanding. It's only meant for the elect of the nation of Israel. But once again, two thirds, man, they're not going to be on this side, man. All right, two thirds are going to be blinded until the destruction. Right, as the book of Isaiah chapter 6 tells us, man. You got more? Right. So the children of the light, the children of the day represents righteousness. The next, what's the next verse say? The son of righteousness. 
children of the light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness said, we are not of the night nor darkness man meaning we are not a part of this world man. are we not involved in following the trends the wickedness of this world man because the lord has separated us from the world man all right bringing us into this wisdom and knowledge and understanding it says therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober Therefore, let us not sleep as you others, because when you when you're asleep, man, you're unconscious and you're unaware of the things that's going on around you. You're oblivious. Yep, you're oblivious. So also, we're not supposed to be like that, man. We're supposed to be attentive to everything that's going on around us, man. Are right, the, the, the the wars is popping off? All right, uh, what's the name? Uh, Israel and Iran finna go at it again? Yeah, Jacob, 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 oblivious. Mm -hmm. Jacob don't know shit about uh, 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 Saudi Arabia dropped the dollar. Uh, other countries dropping the dollar. What does that mean for the economy? How that's going to affect you and, and your plans? Jake talking about what the Jake talking about what they doing for the summer? Where they going to travel? I'm going. I'm going to Houston. I'm going to Canada. Jake sleep. Hey, it's a lot going on, man. All right. Uh, uh what's the name? Uh, Kill Gates. Are he? He's talking about a war in Australia. All right, of pestilence that might uh, uh, um, uh, kill Gates talking about um, a pestilence that's going to occur first in Australia. All right, and, and they were talking about in the article, all right, that it's possibly man made. So they tell it on themselves, man. All right, they tell it on themselves, man. And Jake's still asleep. And you got that article that came out recently where it says human implant C hip takes center stage. All right. And we know what they're talking about, but Jake, Jake not taking heed to that, man. Like they worry about partying, drinking, having sex, this, that, and the other, man. Or right, what well, destruction is knocking at their doorstep, man. Right. Yeah, Jake don't know nothing about uh, uh, what's going on with Russia and mm -hmm. China, okay? The average, when we say Jake, we mean these so-called Negro Latino Native Americans. But in actuality, off it really means you average American. Because you talk to the, the foreigners from Nigeria or from Haiti or Dominican Republic. And they got a, they got somewhat of a handle on world affairs. But but in Babylon, you people like, yeah, he, he saw too. He saw too. He saw he saw at, at Esau's dinner table, the average Edomite so-called white American dinner table, they talking about the impending future civil war. Yep. That's what they talking about. But that's not a scripture the brothers been told. My people are foolish. My people don't consider. They perish from a lack of knowledge. Yep. All right. So, so Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he, that which he seeketh. What Israel seeketh for? What Israel seeketh for? The truth. Salvation, that's cool too, but also the truth. That's why when you read uh, Romans and when you read Acts and what Jake was always on to philosophy. Always, that's what our people are doing. Our people are trying to find, our people are trying to find a remedy to this hell. That's why Jake all up into the zodiac. That's why Jake up into business. That's why Jake up into various different things. Uh, 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 Islam. Jake into energy. Yeah, energy. It's energy niggas. It's energy. <laughs> because Israel says, because uh, Israel have not obtained that which they seek it for. Israel seek it for a remedy to this hell, some type of doctrine, some type of way. That's why you read Acts, they call the truth the way. They were part of the, they, they, they seek it for some type of um, 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 ideology. 
All right? But the scripture says what? The election have obtained it. But, the, go ahead, go ahead. But the election have obtained it. And the rest were blinded. And the rest were blinded. So only the elect. All right? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is going to have a solution and an answer to the to the world's problems, the, the problems that's happening now and the problems that's going to come. And that answer is this truth. You have one, you have one real quick. It's like it's like you brought up a study uh, last night, man. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, 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 what then is a secret for? Like you brought up a study yesterday, Jake, Jake is just running to the to grass once man, Cleve once. Right? Like it's good to say, uh, back in Deuteronomy 28, that this curse shall be upon you for a sign and for a wonder. So naturally, when we were going through certain things, we'd be like, man, why is this happening to us? Why are we going through this, man? Are they Yahweh Bashi Yashad brought us to the wisdom not to understand it? And that's when we were like, oh, so that's why slavery happened. That's why we're going through affliction. That's why this is happening to us. All right, but once again, two thirds of our people are still oblivious to that, man. Yep. Go ahead, son. Who else was holding? Don't nobody hold it. Go to Proverbs 1 and 20. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 20. It says, Wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. Cried in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttered her words, saying, "Yeah, yeah wisdom crieth without." Right? It says, uh, uh, "A city set on the hill cannot be hid." Uh -huh. So this wisdom crying without, not within, not within the building. It's crying without in the chief place of the city. Go ahead. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? So wisdom cussing you out. That, that phrase right there, how long you simple one? To be called simple, that's almost a big deal. Somebody said, you know, you like, somebody said, so simple as that. You're being simple. So this is what wisdom tell you. Wisdom getting on you. So you people that, y'all got the wrong idea of righteousness and wisdom. Wisdom saying, well, say it again. How long you simple ones? How long you simple ones? Will you love simplicity? Will you love simplicity? And scorners delight in their scorning. Uh huh. And fools hate knowledge. And fools, that, that's what wisdom's saying to you. Alright? And that phrasing right there is slightly harsh. That's letting you know how wisdom coming, man. Read. Hey, because when your house child was on the scene, he wasn't he considering nobody fun, man. Alright, when your house child was on the scene, hey, he was like this. Oh, this is, this, this is, it is what it is, man. Alright, he, he was calling Jake vipers, scorpions. Those are modern day cuss words, man. Yeah. Are you how was I was cussing Jake out back then, man? That's why I was to say, cry out loud, spare that. not. Go ahead. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. All right, so also, when we out here on the highways and byways, man, we're not sparing your goddamn feelings, man. All right, we doing what the Lord told us to do, man. All right, we don't hold nothing back like the apostle Paul said. I am not shunned to declare unto you the whole gospel, man. Because we your friend. Mm -hmm. yes, a friend keep it real. That's right. We're not your enemy. We ain't humbling ourselves and crouching. Right. And the, and the answer is yes. <laughs> Finish this up. Mm -hmm. It says, and shoot my people their transgression yep. and the house of Jacob their sins. To show show them what they mm -hmm. doing. So like it. Right? Yeah, you you got it. Show them what they do. Show them how they going off and doing wrong. All right? Show them. Look, you going off. And these are supposed to be mean you dealing with. As a man, you're supposed to be openly accepting to being corrected when your ass wrong. It ain't like when you're dealing with your woman, you got to tiptoe. You, know, you got to keep it. You know, you got you to say it a certain way when you're with your woman. You say it a certain way. But you dealing with men. That's why the scripture says, uh, 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 spare not. Show them their sin. Show them, you know, women, you, you know, 
That's why the Lord said, that's why the Lord called That's why the Lord called men. All right, we got another, we got another scripture. Close the scripture. Finish that out. Finish that out, Prophet. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. That's how he's doing it now. He got his men over here giving you the breakdown. I will make my words known unto you. Because these words were known for ages past. The Lord said, I will pour my spirit out unto you. I will make my words known unto you. Read. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. That's why the Lord said, what? My spirit will not always strive with man. See, he was striving with you. He's striving with you now. Uh, uh, the, the word strive going into going back and forth. You say your peace. I say my peace. I say my peace, you say your peace. Pretty soon, ain't gonna be none of that. This is gonna get down to lay down. Really, it's get down to lay down now. But the Lord ex can explain to you why it's best for you to get down. Really? It will behoove me to get down with me. Basically. Go ahead. Because I have, uh, but he have said it not all my counsel. And with none of my reproof. You went against it. You scoffed. You scoffed it. You went against it. You you did everything in your power to disagree with the words of the Lord. Read. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Right. So because you didn't choose the fear of the Lord. Oh, read the next verse. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Uh -huh. For they hated the knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. For they hated this information. They hated that they couldn't eat pork. They hated that they couldn't do drugs. They hated that the Lord didn't love everybody. Therefore, they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. The discipline of the Lord. Because if you fear somebody, you're going to do what they tell you to do. Read. They would none of my my. They would none of my counsel. They would none of my counsel. They ain't missing none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. They hated. They hated my instruction. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. So wherever your path leads you in life, that's what gonna be your result. If you if you if you a homosexual, you gonna get AIDS. If you uh, 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 eat pork and swine and all that, you gonna get diabetes and the like, etc. Take us out. All right. Lord, this lesson was edifying to the body. I want to close out by giving all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakhakudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well and preach the truth to sincerity. Shalom to the hope of luck. And Lord, this lesson was edifying with that. Abba, 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 Abba,